He waded ashore, shivering and coughing, and wrapped himself in a blanket, and sat in the warm sand in front of the fire, with the boxes beside him. The boy crouched, and tried to put his arms around him, which at least brought a smile. What did you find, Papa? I found a first aid kit, and I found a flare pistol. What's that? I'll show you. It's to signal with. Is that what you went to look for? Yes. How did you know it was there? Well, I was hoping it was there. It was mostly luck. He opened the case and turned it for the boy to see. It's a gun. A flare gun. It shoots a thing up in the air, and it makes a big light. Can I look at it? Sure you can. The boy lifted the gun from the case and held it. Can you shoot somebody with it? He said. You could. Would it kill them? No, but it might set them on fire. Is that why you got it? Yes. Because there's nobody to signal to, is there? No. I'd like to see it. You mean shoot it? Yes. We can shoot it. For real? Sure. In the dark? Yes, in the dark. It could be like a celebration. Like a celebration, yes. Can we shoot it tonight? Why not? Is it loaded? No, but we can load it. The boy stood holding the gun. He pointed it towards the sea. Wow, he said. He got dressed, and they set out down the beach, carrying the last of their plunder. Where do you think the people went, Papa? That were on the ship? Yes. I don't know. Do you think they're dead? I don't know. But the odds are not in their favour. The man smiled. The odds are not in their favour? No, are they? No, probably not. I think they died. Maybe they did. I think that's what happened to them. They could be alive somewhere, the man said. It's possible. The boy didn't answer. They went on. They'd wrapped their feet in sailcloth and bound them up in blue plastic bamboos, cut from a tarp, and they left strange tracks in their comings and going. He thought about the boy and his concerns and after a while he said you're probably right I think they are probably dead because it because if they were alive we'd be taking their stuff and we're not taking their stuff I know okay so how many people do you think are alive in the world in the world yes I don't know let's stop and rest okay you're wearing me out okay they sat among their bundles. How long can we stay here, Papa? You asked me that. I, I know. We'll see. That means not very long. Probably. The boy poked holes in the sand with his fingers until he had a circle of them. The man watched him. I don't know how many people there are, he said. I don't think there are very many. I know. He pulled his blanket about his shoulders and looked out down the grey and barren beach. What is it? the man said. Nothing. No, tell me. There could be people alive someplace else. Where place else? I, I don't know. Anywhere. You mean besides on Earth? Yes. I don't think so. They couldn't live any place else. Not even if they could get there? No. The boy looked away. What? The man said. He shook his head. I don't know what we're doing. The man started to answer, but he didn't. After a while, he said, There are people, and we'll find them. You'll see. 
He fixed dinner while the boy played in the sand. He had a spatula made from a flattened food tin, and with it he built a small village. He dredged a grid of streets. The man walked down and squatted and looked at it. The boy looked up. The ocean's going to get it, isn't it? He said. Yes. That's okay. Can you write the alphabet? I can write it. We don't work on your lessons anymore. I know. Can you write something in the sand? Maybe we could write a letter to the good guys. So if they came along, they'd know we were here. We could write it up there, where it wouldn't get washed away. What if the bad guys saw it? Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. We could write them a letter. The boy shook his head. That's okay. He loaded the flare pistol, and as soon as it was dark, they walked out, down the beach, away from the fire, and he asked the boy if he wanted to shoot it. You shoot it, Papa. You know how to do it. Okay. He cocked the gun and aimed it out over the bay and pulled the trigger. The flare arced up into the murk with a long whoosh and broke somewhere out over the water in a clouded light and hung there. The hot tendrils of magnesium drifted slowly down the dark and the pale foreshore tide started in the glare and slowly faded. He looked down at the boy's upturned face. They couldn't see it very far, could they, Papa? Who? Anybody. No, not far. If you wanted to show where you were. You mean like to the good guys? Yes. Or anybody. That you wanted them to know where you were. Like who? I don't know. Like God? Yeah. Maybe somebody like that. In the morning, he built a fire and walked out on the beach while the boy slept. He was not long gone, but he felt a strange unease, and when he got back, the boy was standing on the beach, wrapped in the blankets, waiting for him. He hurried his steps. By the time he got to him, he was sitting down. What is it? he said. What is it? I don't feel good, Papa. He cupped the boy's forehead in his hand. He was burning. He picked him up and carried him to the fire. It's okay, he said. You're going to be okay. I think I'm going to be sick. It's okay. He sat with him in the sand and held his forehead while he bent and vomited. He wiped the boy's mouth with his hand. I'm sorry, the boy said. Shh, you didn't do anything wrong. He carried him up to the camp and covered him with blankets. He tried to get him to drink some water. He put more wood on the fire and knelt with his hand on his forehead. You'll be all right, he said. He was terrified. Don't go away, the boy said. Of course I won't go away, not even for a little while. No, I'm right here. Okay, Papa. He held him all night dozing off and waking in terror, feeling for the boy's heart. In the morning, he was no better. He tried to get him to drink some juice, but he would not. He pressed his hand to his forehead, conjuring up a coolness that would not come. He wiped his white mouth while he slept. I will do what I promised, he whispered, no matter what. I will not send you into the darkness alone. He went through the first aid kit from the boat, but there was nothing much there of use. Aspirin, bandages and disinfectant. Some antibiotics, but they had a short shelf life. Still, that was all he had, and he helped the boy drink and put one of the capsules on his tongue. He was soaked in sweat. He'd already stripped him out of the blankets, and now he unzipped him out of his coat, and then out of his clothes, and moved him away from the fire. The boy looked up at him. So cold, he said. I know, but you have a really high temperature. We have to get you cooled off. C 
Can I have another blanket? Yes, of course. You won't go away. No, I won't go away. He carried the boy's filthy clothes into the surf and washed them, standing, shivering, in the cold salt water, naked from the waist down, and sloshing them up and down, and wringing them out. He spread them by the fire, on sticks, angled into the sand, and piled on more wood, and went and sat by the boy again, smoothing his matted hair. In the evening, he opened a can of soup, and set it in the coals, and he ate, and watched the darkness come up. When he woke, he was lying shivering in the sand, and the fire had died almost to ash, and it was black night. He sat up wildly, and reached for the boy. Yes, he whispered, yes. He rekindled the fire, and he got a cloth, and wet it, and put it over the boy's forehead. The wintry dawn was coming. And when it was light enough to see, he went into the woods beyond the dunes, and came back, dragging a great travoy of dead limbs and branches, and set about breaking them up and stacking them near the fire. He crushed aspirins in a cup, and dissolved them in water, and put in some sugar, and sat and lifted the boy's head, and held the cup while he drank. He walked the beach, slumped and coughing. He stood looking out at the dark swells. He was staggering with fatigue. He went back and sat by the boy, and refolded the cloth, and wiped his face, and then spread the cloth over his forehead. You have to stay near, he said. You have to be quick, so you can be with him. Hold him close. Last day of the earth. The boy slept all day. He kept waking him up to drink the sugar water. The boy's dry throat, jerking and chugging. You have to drink, he said. Okay, wheezed the boy. He twisted the cup into the sand beside him and cushioned the folded blanket under his sweaty head and covered him. Are you cold, he said but the boy was already asleep. He tried to stay awake all night, but he could not. He woke endlessly, and sat and slapped himself, or rose to put wood on the fire. He held the boy, and bent to hear the laboured suck of air. His hand on the thin and laddered ribs. He walked out on the beach, to the edge of the light, and stood with his clenched fists on top of his skull and fell to his knees, sobbing in rage. It rained briefly in the night, a light patter on the tarp. He pulled it over them, and turned, and lay holding the child, watching the blue flames through the plastic. He fell into a dreamless sleep. When he woke again, he hardly knew where he was. The fire had died, the rain had ceased. He threw back the tarp and pushed himself up on his elbows. Grey daylight. The boy was watching him. Papa, he said. Yes, I'm right here. Can I have a drink of water? Yes, of course you can. How are you feeling? I feel kind of weird. Are you hungry? Just really thirsty. Let me get the water. He pushed back the blankets and rose, and walked out, past the dead fire, and got the boy's cup, and filled it out of the plastic water jug, and came back and knelt, and held the cup for him. You're going to be okay, he said. The boy drank. He nodded and looked at his father. Then he drank the rest of the water. More, he said. He built a fire, and propped the boy's wet clothes up and brought him a can of apple juice. Do you remember anything? He said. What's about? About being sick. I remember shooting the flare gun. Do you remember getting stuff from the boats? He sat sipping the juice. He looked up. I'm not a retard, he said. I know. I had some weird dreams. What about? 
I don't want to tell you. That's okay. I want you to brush your teeth. With real toothpaste? Yes. Okay. He checked all the food tins, but he could find nothing suspect. He threw out a few that looked pretty rusty. They sat that evening by the fire, and the boy drank hot soup, and the man turned his steaming clothes on the sticks and sat watching him until the boy became embarrassed. Stop watching me, Papa, he said. Okay, but he didn't. In two days' time, they were walking the beach, as far as the headland and back, trudging along in their plastic booties. They ate huge meals, and he put up a sailcloth lean-to with ropes and poles against the wind. They pruned down their stores to a manageable load for the cart, and he thought they might leave in two more days. Then, coming back to the camp late in the day, he saw boot prints in the sand. He stopped and looked down the beach. Oh Christ, he said. Oh Christ. What is it, Papa? He pulled the pistol from his belt. Come on, he said. Hurry. The tarp was gone. Their blankets, the water bottle, and their campsite store of food. The sailcloth was blown up into the dunes. Their shoes were gone. He ran up, through the swale of sea oats where he'd left the cart, but the cart was gone. Everything. You stupid ass, he said. You stupid ass! The boy was standing there, wide-eyed. What happened, Papa? They took everything. Come on! The boy looked up. He was beginning to cry. Stay with me! The man said. Stay right with me. He could see the tracks of the cart, where they sloughed up through the loose sand. Boot prints. How many? He lost the track on the better ground beyond the bracken, and then picked it up again. When they got to the road, he stopped the boy with his hand. The road was exposed to the wind from the sea, and it was blown free of ash, save for patches here and there. Don't step in the road, he said, and stop crying. We need to get all the sand off our feet. Here, sit down. He untied the wrappings and shook them out and tied them back again. I want you to help, he said. We're looking for sand. Sand in the road, even just a little bit. To see which way they went, okay? Okay. They set off down the blacktop in opposite directions. He'd not gone far before the boy called out. Here it is, Papa. They went this way. When he got there, the boy was crouched in the road. Right here, he said. It was a half teaspoon of beach sand, tilted from somewhere in the understructure of the grocery cart. The man stood and looked out down the road. Good work, he said. Let's go. They set off at a jog trot, a pace he thought he'd be able to keep up, but he couldn't. He had to stop, leaning over and coughing. He looked up at the boy, wheezing. We'll have to walk, he said. If they hear us, they'll hide by the side of the road. Come on. How many are there, Papa? I don't know, maybe just one. Are we going to kill them? I don't know. They went on. It was already late in the day, and it was another hour, and deep into the long dusk before they overtook the thief. Bent over the loaded cart, trundling down the road before them. When he looked back and saw them, he tried to run with the cart, but it was useless, and finally he stopped, and stood behind the cart, holding a butcher's knife. When he saw the pistol, he stepped back, but he didn't drop the knife. Get away from the car, the man said. He looked at them. He looked at the boy. He was an outcast from one of the communes, and the fingers of his right hand had been cut away. He tried to hide it behind him, a sort of fleshy spatula. 
The cart was piled high. He'd taken everything. Get away from the cart and put the knife down. He looked around, as if there might be some help somewhere. Scrawny, sullen, bearded, filthy. His old plastic coat held together with tape. The pistol was a double action, but the man cocked it anyway. Two loud clicks. Otherwise, only their breathing in the silence of the salt moorland. They could smell him in his stinking rags. If you don't put down the knife and get away from the cart, the man said, I'm going to blow your brains out. The thief looked at the child, and what he saw was very sobering to him. He laid the knife on top of the blankets and backed away and stood. Back! More! He stepped back again. Papa, the boy said. Be quiet. He kept his eyes on the thief. God damn you, he said. Papa, please don't kill the man. The thief's eyes swung wildly. The boy was crying. Come on, man. I done what you said. Listen to the boy. Take your clothes off. What? Take them off every goddamn stitch. Come on. Don't do this. I'll kill you where you stand. Don't do this, man. I won't tell you again. All right. All right, just take it easy. He stripped slowly and piled his vile rags in the road. The shoes. Come on, man. The shoes. The thief looked at the boy. The boy had turned away and put his hands over his ears. Okay, he said. Okay. He sat naked in the road and began to unlace the rotting pieces of leather laced to his feet. Then he stood up, holding them in one hand. Put them in the cart. He stepped forward and placed the shoes on top of the blankets and stepped back. Standing there, raw and naked. Filthy, starving. Covering himself with his hand. He was already shivering. Put the clothes in. He bent and scooped up the rags in his arms and piled them on top of the shoes. He stood there, holding himself. Don't do, don't do this, man. You didn't mind doing it to us. I'm begging you. Papa, the boy said. Come on, listen to the kid. You tried to kill us. I'm starving, man. You'd have done the same. You took everything. Come on, man. I'll die. I'm going to leave you the way you left us. Come on. I'm begging you. He pulled the cart back and swung it around and put the pistol on top and looked at the boy. Let's go, he said. And they set out along the road south, with the boy crying and looking back at the nude and slap-like creature standing there in the road, shivering and hugging himself. Oh, Papa, he sobbed. Stop it. I can't, I can't stop it. What do you think would have happened to us if we hadn't caught him? Just stop it. I'm trying. When they got to the curve in the road, the man was still standing there. There was no place for him to go. The boy kept looking back, and when he could no longer see him, he stopped, and then he just sat down in the road, sobbing. The man pulled up and stood looking at him. He dug their shoes out of the cart and sat down and began to take the wrappings off the boy's feet. You have to stop crying, he said. I can't. He put on their shoes and then stood and walked back up the road, but he couldn't see the thief. He came back and stood over the boy. He's gone, he said. Come on. He's not gone, the boy said. He looked up, his face streaked with soot. He's not. What do you want to do? Just help him, Papa, just help him. 
The man looked back up the road. He was just hungry, Papa. He's going to die. He's going to die anyway. He's so scared, Papa. The man squatted and looked at him. I'm scared. Do you understand? I'm scared. The boy didn't answer. He just sat there with his head bowed, sobbing. You're not the one who has to worry about everything. The boy said something, but he couldn't understand him. What? he said. He looked up, his wet and grimy face. Yes, I am, he said. I am the one. They wheeled the tottering cart back up the road, and stood there in the cold, and the gathering dark, and called. But no one came. He's afraid to answer, Papa. Is this where we stopped? I don't know. I think so. They went up the road, calling out in the empty dusk, their voices lost over the darkening shorelands. They stopped, and stood with their hands cupped to their mouths, hallowing mindlessly into the waste. Finally, he piled the man's shoes and clothes in the road. He put a rock on top of them. We have to go, he said. We have to go. They made a dry camp with no fire. He sorted out cans for their supper and warmed them over the gas burner, and they ate, and the boy said nothing. The man tried to see his face in the blue light from the burner. I wasn't going to kill him, he said. But the boy didn't answer. They rolled themselves in the blankets and lay there in the dark. He thought he could hear the sea, but perhaps it was just the wind. He could tell by his breathing that the boy was awake, and after a while the boy said, But we did kill 